I can't believe it's been five years with my Mark 7 GTI already. Is it too late to add more mods to this geriatric GTI or should I just get rid of it? According to some, I'm way overdue for ditching this car. I had plenty of comments on my three-year video saying that 93,000 miles was too much and that I should get rid of it while I still could. Of course, I didn't listen. The car now has over 143,000 miles. So what's next? Unlike a lot of other GTI enthusiasts, I use my GTI mostly in a utilitarian way. With nearly 400 horsepower on tap, it certainly has a sport bias to it. So does that mean it's a sport utility vehicle? Most SUVs are large and not sporty at all. Compact utility vehicles or CUVs are a little smaller, often gutless and similarly unsporty. Perhaps my GTI is a micro SUV, if you define that term by the words and not the fashion statement that they represent in sales circles. You may recall that I coined the term Microlander back when I was considering some camping. Microlander is basically my variation of the term Overlander, which is a form of adventure that has seen a rise in popularity over the past several years. Since my camping ideas haven't become a reality, perhaps Micro SUV is, better, is a better fit for my GTI. Clearly, I'm using the car in ways that it wasn't intended, right? If you've been following for a while, then you know that my car is stuffed with ham radio equipment, electronics, and even a refrigerator. Many would say that I'd be better served by an Atlas or another large vehicle. And perhaps it's even time to consider a Jeep or Bronco to scratch my itch for off-road adventure. But if I'm honest with you and myself, I really enjoy driving my GTI on the road almost every day. Sure, I can't drive it off-road, and sure, it's not large enough to camp in, and yeah, it's a small platform for the things that I have in it, but my GTI is the car that I want to be in anytime I get behind the wheel. In fact, I'm currently on a road trip, and we drove my wife's Mark VI Jetta SE, and ugh, it's, uh, it's totally gutless at 150 horsepower, and it handles like a wet sponge. So if my GTI is my car of choice and mine's old enough to be put out to pasture now, then why not get a newer one? Well, to put it simply, there's nothing wrong with my car. That's not to say it hasn't had its faults or that it won't fall apart soon, but the car is currently perfect. On top of that, I don't want to undo all of the work that I've done to this car just so that I can sell it only to reinstall everything into a newer car. Besides, you may have noticed that the used car market is crazy right now. Sure, I could get top dollar for my car, considering its age and mileage, but then I'd have to pay top dollar for its replacement. For the money, I'd rather maintain what I have. I've always been one to keep my cars for the long haul. I kept my first new car, a 1998 Nissan Sentra, for 11 years. And we kept my wife's 2003 Passat for 11 years as well. My 98 Jetta TDI was my daily driver for 16 years and 445,000 miles. My daughter came home from the hospital for the first time in that car, and she got to drive it before it was retired. I sold it for parts when it was 20 years old. Will my GTI last as long? That's hard to say because it, it has better body construction, but more plastic on the engine. So perhaps we'll find out together. I mentioned that the car has had some faults. My three-year entry detailed a list of really minor, mostly self-inflicted items, and virtually nothing new surfaced between then and the car's fourth anniversary. At that point, I had just preemptively cleaned the intake in preparation for a 7,000 mile road trip to California. And the valves, they look good. I mean, they, they could have just kept on going. They weren't plugged up. I mean, sure, they had some gunk on them, but it wasn't anything awful. And so uh, anyway, back to the trip, we, uh, we took a trailer on that trip. 
the car had its most significant setback around 3,000 miles into that trip. I had cylinder three misfire and hide cylinder faults. And we were on a very tight schedule set by my mother's memorial service, so we didn't have time to find an independent Volkswagen shop in California. I tried a few things on my own, but it, I just very quickly decided to visit a Volkswagen dealer so that I can get more competent, speedy attention on the car. The dealer tried to take me on a ridiculous and expensive pursuit of parts. Long story short, my local mechanic, Euro Pros of Yorktown, Virginia, diagnosed a car over the phone after learning that my compression and leak down test had very good results and that the fault didn't move from, from cylinder three to elsewhere when the coil packs or spark plugs were, were moved. So with the car safe to drive, so long as I stayed out of the power, I got it out of that dealership and we drove 4,000 miles back to Virginia with the trailer and my mother's stuff in tow. Sure enough, Europro's diagnosis of a faulty injector was spot on. So much for relying on any sort of competence at that particular Volkswagen dealer. And while all the injectors were being replaced, uh, the mechanic at Europro's noticed a coolant leak. And so finally, after all of this time suspecting something but being unable to find any evidence of a leak, we found something. So he replaced the water pump, thermostat, and its housing. All work was done, including the injectors, at 114,000 miles about a year ago. See more about that troubleshooting journey? Uh, I'll link it up here. A lot of my YouTube viewers blame the injector fault on my excessive towing. I mean, my car easily has 25 or 30,000 miles of towing under its uh, timing belt. My mechanic disagreed though. Sometimes parts just don't last as long as they should. I found myself in need of returning to California just a few months later, and this time I took my cargo trailer. Driving a similar route outbound and then even more mountainous roads on the return trip, I'd say the GTI, its 2.0 turbo engine, and its injectors completely redeemed themselves. The car performed flawlessly. I'll share a little bit about that trip up here if you're interested. I had also taken my Dometic refrigerator with me on both of those trips, and it was after the second trip that I found merit in leaving it in the car full time. Um, I'll share about that decision as well. At 128,000 miles, a time at which most would not consider doing power mods, I decided it was time to replace the turbo with an IS38, and that's the standard turbo on the Golf R and the Audi S3. There's nothing wrong with my stock turbo. I just wanted to chase more power. I stayed with APR for the tune and upgraded my spark plugs to the factory parts for an Audi RS7. And the difference is fantastic. Learn more about that upgrade and video I'll share here. And believe it or not, the car is still capable of good fuel economy. I got 42 miles to the gallon on one of my road trips and that's hand calculated, not what's shown on the display. I also recently replaced my tires with Michelin's new Pilot Sport All Season 4 tires for improved grip, and they're an excellent improvement over the outgoing Pilot Sport AS3 Pluses. I had those for over 40,000 miles. The only other maintenance item needed during the past year has been a new key fob battery. I had switched from the standard CR2025 to the slightly larger CR2032 and was surprised to see it last for two years. Now, there are some parts that I've expected to replace over the course of 140,000 miles, but in my case, they've actually lasted very well due to my driving style. My brakes, suspension, and engine mounts are all original, if you can believe that. My brakes, they, they might pass inspection this year. I'm due in December, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace them and then get, them, get the car inspected with fresh brakes. My suspension is still working well and it doesn't have any rebound. And my mechanic actually told me that he's never removed a failed factory strut. And I find that amazing. So uh, challenge accepted. My engine and transmission mounts are holding up well too. Even the dog bone mount. I attribute some of that to having disabled my cross differential system, also known as XDS. And I let the VAQ, it's set to, um, max aggressive, I, I forget what the name is, but it's set to its most aggressive setting. And 
the VAQ differential does all the work now. So I have yet to experience wheel hop. Maybe I'm being too much of a grandpa when I drive the car, who knows. Given all that I've done to the car, especially this year, I'm sure you can imagine why I plan to hang on to it. While some choose to buy, mod, and sell every two to three years, I opt to mod at a slower pace and then keep my cars until they're almost worthless. That's a recipe that has worked well for me for over 30 years. Personally, I'd rather spend $5,000 to fix an older car than I like than $30,000 to replace it with something newer. Thankfully, I haven't had to make that decision, not yet anyway. Stick around and see just how well this modified geriatric GTI holds up over the long haul. Will it last or will it implode? Only time will tell. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.